May be seated. I'd like to welcome everyone to the September 2020 commencement ceremony of Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology. We welcome all of our students who are able to be in attendance today and welcome all those who are watching online for this ceremony is being streamed live on Facebook Live and will be available on demand through the OSUIT Facebook page and the OSUIT YouTube, YouTube channel. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our graduates for uh, your patience and getting lined up, getting here early, and uh, being uh, so patient during this process. This is the first time we've conducted a uh, contactless graduation ceremony, and uh, it, there may be some limitations with the ceremony. But I assure you, there have been no limitations placed upon your instruction, your training, or your degrees. Congratulations to all of you. This is a very proud day on campus for all of us. And I want to thank everyone for joining us. To recognize the achievements of the members of the 216th graduating class of OSUIT. Between our two ceremonies today, we have 249 students graduating from OSUIT. And I'm proud to say that 80% are graduating with honors and how that breaks down is as follows 108 of our students are graduating cum laude that's a grade point average of 3.0 to 3.45 61 are graduating magna cum laude that's a grade point average between 3.5 and 3.79 and 32 are graduating summa cum laude that's a grade point average of 3.8 or above the names of all of the honors graduates are identified within the commencement program, and they're each wearing a special medallion today to signify their academic achievement. Congratulations to all of our honors graduates. You will also recognize the graduating members of our International Scholarship Society, known as Phi Theta Kappa, by their gold stoles that they're wearing for the ceremony this afternoon. As a military-friendly institution, we are always taking great pride in recognizing veterans. You will recognize our graduating veterans today by the red, white, and blue cords that they are wearing as part of their academic regalia. I recognize that this is a very accomplished group of graduates sitting before me. You have endured the challenges of college, the hardships of COVID-19, and you have emerged victorious. Through your hard work and fortitude, each of you have made yourself very proud today. I have the greatest respect for each and every one of you. Please give yourself and all of your fellow graduates a well-deserved round of applause. <laughs> Due to the restrictions placed on the ceremony by COVID-19, none of our Board of Regents were able to travel and be here with us in person today. However, our board chair, Mr. Rick Davis, did forward me his prepared comments and asked me to read them on his behalf, and I'm honored to do so. He writes, Candidates for degrees. On behalf of the Board of Regents, congratulations to the OSUIT class of 2020. Today is a cause for celebration as we recognize this milestone in your lives. Your time at OSUIT has no doubt been a period of personal growth that will change the course of your life. For many of us, OSU has played a critical role in the development of successful careers. For others, it may be where you met your spouse or other lifelong friends. Many factors will help determine how you serve, work, and live. But on this occasion, we recognize just how important OSUIT is to all of us to the administration, faculty, staff, students, and all who make OSUIT special, the Board of Regents say thank you for a job well done. Graduates, we honor you today and we celebrate with you and your families. Congratulations on your achievements. I hope that your time at OSUIT will include countless wonderful memories that you will carry with you forever. As a graduate, you represent America's brightest orange. Oklahoma State University has influenced your lives. May you enhance its name through your continued academic pursuits, your careers, and service to the greater good. Again, on behalf of the Board of Regents, congratulations to all of you. Signed, Rick Davis, Board Chair.
It is now my pleasure to introduce the members of the platform party, each of which will be participating in this afternoon's ceremony. First, I'd like to introduce a couple of the members of my senior administrative team, uh, Dr. Scott Newman, who is our provost and vice president of academic affairs. Let's give him a round of applause. Just off stage to my left is Dr. Ina Agnew. She is our Vice President of Student Services. Our student speaker will be more formally introduced in just a few moments, but I would like to ask Tyler Koshaway to stand and be recognized at this time. Thank you, Tyler. We're looking forward to your comments. And now it is my privilege to introduce our commencement speaker for the afternoon, Dr. Pete Brown. Dr. Brown is a faculty member of Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology for the School of Engineering and Construction Technologies. He teaches for the Natural Gas Compression Technology Program and has been employed with OSUIT for 10 years. Dr. Brown teaches basic engines, advanced engines, air, air fuel systems, programmable logic controllers, engine electronics, and capstone. Dr. Brown has over 30 years of industry experience in engine and engine electronics. He was a training specialist for Warren Cat of Oklahoma City and has delivered Caterpillar training practices throughout the world. In 2016, he received the OSUIT Regents Distinguished Teaching Award. He received his bachelor's degree from the University of Central Oklahoma, a master's degree from Concordia University, and an EDD in teaching leadership from, also from Concordia University. Graduates, please give a nice round of applause and welcome to the microphone, Dr. Pete Brown. Thank you, Dr. Path, for the introduction. It is indeed an honor to be a part of the celebration of the 216th graduating class of Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology. One more time, let's give yourself a hand for being part of this class. I would also like to show verbal support and accolades to the members of our platform party today. Dr. Path, Dr. Newman, Dr. Agnew, it is an honor to stand beside you as we welcome our graduates to the workforce. A special congratulation to our student respondent, Tyler Koshaway also from the School of Engineering and Construction Technologies. Thank you for speaking on behalf of the student body. Your strength and your leadership is very admirable. It is indeed an immense pleasure to share in the intensity of this room. Even though we're muffled more than we usually are, and things are different, I can still feel the intensity and the excitement that you have, and, and it, it's in this room. The expectations are high, as they should be, and the pessimism is low. This portrays hope, which is the foundation of joy. Amid a world that looks vastly different than it did just a few short months ago, we come together differently than we have ever come together before. Yet, there is hope in this room. There is joy in this room. And there is energy that is waiting to be released into a world that desperately needs hope and joy. It is easy to take for granted the privilege, the privilege that it is to graduate from a university. Especially in our nation, where going to college and graduating is, is common. And getting a degree is common. We are indeed privileged to live in this nation that was founded on the premise that there are truths that are self-evident. The truth that we are all created equal. The truth that we are endowed with certain natural rights. The right to exist. The right to choose our own path. And the right to pursue a, la a life of happiness. These are but a few. You all have made your first step, or one of the steps leading to this point in choosing your own path. And hopefully the path that you have chosen will lead you to happiness and fulfillment. 
It was 1977. I know that sounds like a long time ago to some of you, but it's only yesterday to me that I graduated from high school. And I began attending that fall after graduation Oklahoma Baptist University in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Actually, in my high school in Hera, Oklahoma, there were few who probably expected me to go to college, probably due to the fact that I had not displayed that many attributes as someone who was going to pursue education at that time. I'll just leave it at that. Most of my high school teachers were probably amazed that I even made it through high school. I know my senior English teacher, well in her 90s, the last time I talked to her, was certainly left in unbelief when I told her that I had achieved my goal of earning a doctor's degree, something that she in her life had only dreamed of. The first day that I walked across that campus in Shawnee, Oklahoma, years ago, My life changed. I sensed a feeling of awe. I sensed a feeling of belonging and of amazement that at that time I couldn't understand. A feeling that I still get today as I walk across this campus. feeling that only now at the age of 61 I'm, be I'm beginning to understand. At that time, I made a commitment to myself. It took me 42 years to complete my studies. The commitment I made to myself was that I'm going to go to school and I'm going to get a bachelor's degree and then I'm going to get a master's degree and then I'm going to get a doctor's degree. Little did I know how much life how long that was going to take. But like I said, it took me 42 years to complete my studies. I had many obstacles, but I never, ever lost hope that it, I could complete my goal. Yet, if nothing else, I've learned that my quest has not ended, or will it ever end. As long as I am alive, I learn each day how to better live. There were many who thought I would never achieve an advanced degree, but I never lost hope that if I kept moving in that direction, I would eventually reach my goal. My hope my hope was based on the confidence that my mother instilled in my life, who is now 94 years old. this day, in her eyes, her children can do no wrong, and that every one of us are destined to succeed. And that's the way she treated us our whole life. My faith in myself also came from the knowledge that I was formed in the womb by my Creator to have a life of abundance, a life of hope. Knowing this, that faith, that faith I had in myself, faith we have anything, that faith is the very material or matter of the things that I was hoping for. It was the very evidence or the very existence of the reality that I wanted to see. Now, what does that even mean? That sounds like something, you know, that, that sounds like rhetoric almost. What does that even mean? Well, to me, it means this. Having faith is a belief that what I'm hoping for already exists. And it's simply waiting for me to be diligent and steadfast enough to claim the rewards of that hope. We are taught so many times that seeing is believing. I look at it a little bit differently. I think Believing and seeing. So, what advice would I have for you at this time? 
And I try to look at it like this. What advice would I have for myself? If I could go back when I was your age, what advice would I have for myself? One of the first things I would tell myself, somewhere in the mid-80s, maybe 1984, 85, maybe 86, I'd say, hey, Pete, scrape up $2,000 and invest it in Microsoft. Now, that's what I would, that's the first thing I would tell myself, because if you'll do a little research, you would find out that if I would have done that, I would probably, my financial situation at this point in life would be differently than it is now. That's all I can say about that. But that would be the first thing I'd tell myself. But really, seriously, on a more serious note, I would tell myself four things. This is coming from a 61-year-old, soon-to-be 62-year-old man. And these things have not always been in my life. But I try, I've disciplined myself to the point where they are now. And the first thing I would tell you is something you may not want to hear. And it's this. Get up early. Take time to think about your day before your day begins. Now, for many people, they call this their quiet time. Or many call it their me time. It's called many different things. I'm sure many would disagree about how important it is to get up early, but since this is my speech, I'm the authority. So, anyway, I am a morning person. Anyone who knows me knows this. I have not always been a morning person. But I have found that I get more done early in the day than I do later in the day. It could be because I'm 61 years old and by the end of the day I'm pretty tired. But I don't know. I've always seemed to get more done in the morning than I do in the evening. So I've disciplined myself to get up much earlier than I need to. Now like I said, I haven't always been this way. But I am now. I have a very long commute. I commute 92 miles to this campus every morning and 92 miles home. So I have about an hour and a half coming and an hour and a half going to think about my day. That's very beneficial to me. Uh, I'm sure my students appreciate the fact that I have an hour and a half to think about different things that I can devise that they can do uh, throughout the week and throughout the day as I, as I have that much time to think about it. But realistically, it really doesn't matter if it's in the morning or if it's late in the evening. You need to take time to think. And not only about work, but about yourself and your life. Me time is important. It's important to take time to where there's no phones ringing and there's nothing going on. And you can just think and reflect upon decisions you've made and the way you've done things and the way you treat people. It's, it's important. So like I said, not only about work, but about yourself and your life. <laughs> because you know what? During these times, you can try to reflect on how you could have handled certain things differently. Even if it works out, it doesn't mean that it couldn't have been done differently or more efficiently. During my life, I've been told by many that I am my biggest critic. And I'll have to agree, I am pretty hard on myself. But being, one, being one's critic, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. So like I said, the first thing I would tell you is, hey, get up early. And basically, we could even change that to say, hey, take time every day to about what you need to get done. The next thing I would tell you is maybe one of the most important things that I've learned in my life. And it's that we need to take control of our thoughts and our situation and have faith that hard work and dedication will yield success. Do not let your mind slip into thoughts of despair and defeat. Uncontrolled thoughts can yield undesirable actions or deeds. Undesirable actions can yield to undesirable characteristics in your life, which could in time change your character. A 
Change in your character will almost certainly change your destiny. So control your mind. Each day, tell yourself this narrative. Tell yourself a narrative that includes how smart you are, how blessed you are, and how privileged you are to have the opportunities that you have. Especially how blessed you are to be alive and well and living in a nation that allows us to fail and then succeed after trying again and again. And I'm going to stop there and say this. It's hard for me to, I don't like to tell students this, but I failed a class at University of Central Oklahoma one time because they had a limit of seven absences. Well, I was working full time. I lost count. And I missed eight times. And I had a, a high B average in the class. But when I got my final grade, it was an F. And so I went to the instructor, and he said, read your syllabus. There's no leverage here. I told you you had seven times you could miss. You missed eight. I said, well, I lost count. He goes, I know that. He goes, I'm sure you did. But I'm not going to change the grade. And so I had to retake that class. So that is pretty important to me, that statement I just made. I failed. But I live in a country that I could come back, tighten up my shoestrings, get back to it, take the class again, and make an A in it, and succeed. And so you're blessed. I'm blessed. We're all blessed to live in a country that that's possible. Don't focus, do not focus on the negative. Negative or bad things are going to happen. At that point, you have a choice. You can learn from it and move forward, or you can focus on the negative and let it take root. I like to call the second choice stinking thinking. If you let negative thoughts take root and fail to focus on the positive, it will definitely have an effect on your destiny. I personally like to be around positive people whose first response is, we can do it. People whose first response is, oh, we can't do that. Or the first response is, you know what, we've never done it that way. I don't think that's going to work. Those kind of people tend to drag me down. I choose not to hang around people who drag me down. Our motto here is be the one they call. I'm telling you not to only be the one they call, be the one they choose. Remembering this, that many are called and few are chosen. The third thing I would tell myself and I'm telling you today is don't be wishy-washy. Do what you say you're going to do. Keep your word. Make it a priority to fulfill your commitments. If you tell someone you're going to be somewhere at a certain time, be there. Being late is not fashionable. It's graceless. Keeping your word displays a remarkable trait that cannot be denied. Not only is it important to keep your word, but monitoring your words is equally, if not more important. Words are the building blocks of who you are, and they reflect your integrity. Words can change the course of events in your life, just like the rudder of a huge ship can change the course of that ship. The power of the positively spoken word cannot be denied, but we cannot also, we cannot forget that a word spoken negatively or in anger has power, and cannot be taken back. Forgiveness can be given, but the words once spoken exist forever in the mind of those who hear. So not only keep your word, but watch your words. This is something I would have told myself definitely. Finally, leave a hole. Now what does that mean? We all have the ability, and it is inevitable, that 
we will leave an impression or a legacy when we are gone. The mark of a really good employee is that they are sorely missed when they are gone. Whether their absence is from taking vacation or being sick for a day or two or leaving the organization altogether, there's a hole that is hard to fill when they are not there. Not only is there a hole that needs to be filled concerning workload, but there's a hole in the hearts and minds of all those who work with that person. You know, years ago, I worked for a company, and they found it economically necessary to have a layoff. The way this company decided how to lay people off was according to their profitability. In other words, how big a hole did they In one certain department, there were 14 people. After all was said and done, there were only two left in that department. These two individuals were pretty much booked through the next year concerning their workload. If they'd have been laid off, there would have been a huge hole, fairly large hole to fill. Try not to be expendable. Finally, and this may be the most important thing, is just have fun. Life is what you make of it. Work is also what you make of it. It can be fun or it can be a real drag. It's up to you. Remember this. Some say that perception is everything. You know, I'm not sure that it's everything, but it's definitely important. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for your thoughtful contributions to today's ceremony. And we're all grateful for your positive, heartfelt message. It is now my privilege to introduce our student respondent, Mr. Tyler Koshaway. Tyler is graduating from OSUIT with an associate in applied science and construction technology, electrical construction, from the School of Engineering and Construction Technology. As a student, Tyler was a member of Phi Theta Kappa, the National Society of Leadership and Success, relying on Christ's knowledge, or ROC, Baptist Collegiate Ministry, construction management professionals, and the Student Government Association. He is a recipient of the Don Porter Construction Management Scholarship. This fall, Tyler will continue his educational journey by pursuing OSUIT's Bachelor of Technology and Applied Technical Leadership degree. Please join me in welcoming Tyler Koshaway to the podium. I can't believe I have to follow that. Man, that was really that was really good, Dr. Brown. Oh. All right, bear with me. This is my first time writing a speech and having to pronounce it out to everybody. So my heart's beating real fast. Um, but good afternoon, and I've got like five to ten minutes to be able to talk about and go over everything that I've got to go over. And so hopefully I won't make the speech boring. Uh, I would like some time to say thank you to everyone who has helped set everything up for this graduation and then everyone who will be tearing down everything after graduation um, and everyone who's been associated with OSUIT in some sort of way, whether you're a faculty member or a, don a donor, uh, simply due to the fact because I know like being a helper, uh, it can be an, an ungrateful job sometimes. Some people just overlook and they, you don't get enough recognition and thankfulness and uh, I would just like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. And for those of you who might not know, uh, my name is Tyler Koshway. Sorry, see, <laughs> making a little mess up there. But all right, yeah, I'm very honored to be the student respondent for the summer semester of 2020. And before I'd like to begin my speech, I would like to address everyone uh, who is watching online. Thank you for being here and watching and taking the time out of your day to watch this graduation ceremony. And I just want to let you know that uh, all these graduates here, everyone that you have interacted with, uh, 
they have shaped their personality one way or another and how they have become the individuals that they are today. It's because of you being an influence in their life in some way, shape, or form. And I just want to say thank you because you were just as important as each and every one of us here. Um, because I know I wouldn't be able to be here without everyone uh, who has helped me along the way. And I'd say thank you to everybody, but it'd be a really long list. And so I just want to say thank you, and we appreciate everything that you've done in our lives. Thank you. Now, I would like to... Now, the main point of this message is that you can do anything that you set your mind to as long as you have the right motivation. And I hope that during the speech, I can encourage each and every one of you um, to keep on succeeding in life. Because we're already here at graduation. It's crazy. It just comes by so quickly. Uh, never stop succeeding. Never stop learning. Um, always improve, no matter how good you are. Uh, keep on trying to be the best person that you can be. Now, I would like to say why I'm wearing all this. Um, I'm having the Muscogee Creek Nation stole. Um, uh, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later, um, because without them, I wouldn't be able to be here. And then through all my hard work and everything, I've got the PTK stole and cords, and then also the NSLS stole and cords as well. Um, just a lot of hard work had to be put in, and I'm very proud of where I am today, uh, simply due to the fact of uh, my story that I'll be able to share with you and the experiences that I've gone through in my life. All right, and I've learned a lot of great things here at OSUIT from all of the courses I have taken, all of the people that I've met, and all the student loans that I've taken out and the scholarships that I have received and the clubs that, that I've been a part of. I have learned something new from each and every one of those encounters. And I wish I could see all your guys' faces uh, because then I'd be able to see who's in my class and people I've just seen across campus and all, all the other different uh, buildings across campus. And I want to be able to let you know that you guys have really impacted me in one way, shape, form, or another. And the one thing I've learned from doing all of this is that time is short. Uh, I started in the fall of 2018, and now it's already graduation. Fall, uh, sorry, summer semester of 2020. But some of you might not know that this isn't my first time uh, coming to OSUIT. The first time was in 2011 to 2012. And I chose to come during that time is because I graduated in 2011. And in my high school, I didn't really focus on uh, my GPA or anything like that. I just wanted to hang out with my friends and just have a good time and stuff like that. And so school wasn't my main priority, and so I didn't take it seriously enough like I should have. And so my GPA in high school was 2.88. And when I got here, um, I chose the program that my uncle graduated from. Uh, he graduated from here in uh, 1988 from Visual Communications. And so I saw the success he had in his life, and I wanted, wanted that for me as well. And so I went into graphic design, but I failed um, because I didn't have the right passion and, um, as, as he did. And so I would just go to class and then I would just go back and then play some games and video games and just meet everyone here across campus and hang out and um, then leave my homework until Sunday. And then you had to like hurry up and uh, try and do it real quick. And then it really wasn't that good. And so it ended up me getting some Fs and Bs and stuff like that. And so by the time that was all said and done, uh, it's the summer of 2012. And so I pretty much worked for the next six years trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And when I came back, because I didn't check my GPA, I came back and my GPA was a 1.8. It was very bad. Uh, I'm surprised they even took me back. It's crazy. Um, and so I was put on academic probation. And I had to do real good during the semester. And there was a couple students that I told them that uh, you guys are ahead of the game, just uh, stick right to it and be able to stay on, fo stay focused and do your work and uh, just show up to class. And yep, and then I was able uh, to get off of that due to the academic forgiveness uh, provisions. And so I'm very glad I was able to. Uh, my GPA now is 3.9 and it's been a long time coming. It's crazy because 
uh, for me, I was wanting to prove to myself that I could uh, graduate from college. Because um, I'm not the smartest person in the world. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm an electrical apprentice as of right now, but I still have about three to four years before I can take my journeyman's test. And I'm 27, so uh, time is ticking. And I also, uh, I don't want to live a life uh, where I regret anything. Um, that's why I still want to play for the Tulsa Driller someday, because that is a chapter in my life. I haven't got to close yet. Um, it was pretty much just stuff in high school. Um, but I want to be able to sleep at night and not wonder uh, what it was like had I done this or that, pretty much. I'm living proof that you can do anything you set your mind to. I've worked hard, stayed up late, uh, tried to increase my knowledge on the things that I needed to know and not the stuff that would hinder me later down the line. And I just wanted to live my life. And there's only 24 hours in a day, so I want to thank you guys for showing up here, um, for, for showing up and being able to walk across stage. It's, it's really an honor to see everyone here. And let me see here. I would like to end with this. Now, I know these are strange times that we're living in right now, and I know we will overcome this. And just remember that we're all people. We all, like, we all have different languages, and we all pretty much have like, different types of blood types and different skin tones and everything like that. But in the end, we're all people. We're all part of the human race, we're all living, breathing organisms. We all need food, we all need water, all need oxygen to survive. And so life will go a whole lot smoother if you just treat the people the way you like to be treated. It's crazy how a simple wave and a, an acknowledgement to somebody can go a long way uh, because someone could be just having a crappy day and it could just be like the awful worst day of their life. But you just saying, hey, how's it going? And a wave, just acknowledging them that they're there uh, goes a long way. Uh, because you could be the only person in their life that could be a, a very good person to them. And uh, you could be the only person who brightens up their day. It's pretty much like we just have to take our each day one day at a time. I would like to thank all of you uh, for listening and for being uh, who you are. I hope that everyone here will achieve greatness. Uh, have a great day and a great week. And if I don't see you again, have a great life. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Congratulations. We're proud of you and we're glad you at this time, I would like to ask that all graduates, uh, candidates, excuse me, for graduation to please rise. President Path, on behalf of the faculty of OSUIT, I am pleased to inform you that these candidates have completed the requirements prescribed by the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education for the degrees of Associate in Applied Science, Bachelor of Technology, and Associate in Science. Consequently, I hereby recommend to you that their degrees be conferred. Upon this recommendation, and by the authority vested in me by the OSU a and Board of Regents, it is my distinguished privilege as president of Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology to confer upon each of you the degrees for which you have been recommended, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Graduates. Please note that a professional photographer will be taking your photo to capture this special moment in your life, and you will be able to order photos from that agency. As a reminder, we ask that you keep your face masks on throughout the ceremony. Masks may be removed for photos. However, we ask that masks be put back on as you exit the stage. We also ask that you give your full attention to each and every graduate today. Last graduate is just as important as the first. And we want each of you to receive the recognition that you deserve. 
Please wait for the usher to escort you one row at a time to the line to have your photo taken. While you're waiting to be photographed, please observe the taped marks on the floor that have been added to ensure social distancing. If you are not in the first row, please be seated at this time. Graduates of Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology, you will now begin your graduation walk. Mowgli Adamson, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Instrumentation Technology. Logan O'Connor, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technologies, Engineering Graphics, and Design Drafting. Cameron Henley, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Pedro Posada, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Aaron Dean Neal, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Power Plant Technology. Conrad Graham, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Power Plant Technology. Johnny Garcia, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Samuel Foreman, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, High Voltage Lineman. Enrique Arguello. Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, High Voltage Lineman. Andres Guevara, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Electrical Construction. Nicholas Reed, Engineering Technology, Associate in Applied Science, Natural Gas Compression. Zane Wheeler, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Industrial Maintenance Technology. Hunter Specht, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Electrical Construction. Tristan Cole, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Electrical Construction. Luis Urbina, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Construction Management. Stephen Eckert, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Casey Armstrong, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Dominic Reyes, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Civil Engineering, Surveying Technology. (laughs) 
Dwayne Lee, Bachelor of Technology, Engineering Technology, Instrumentation, Engineering Technology. <laughs> Daniel Edgman, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Power Plant Technology. Fernando Tapia, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Construction Management. <laughs> David Jackson, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. <laughs> Chance Beasley, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Christian Herrera, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Electrical Construction. <laughs> Connor Campbell, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Power Plant Technology. <laughs> Austin Ball, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Jacob Bays, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. <laughs> Keenan Rogers, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. <laughs> David Baer, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Harry Ocampo Perez, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. <laughs> Daylin Burrell, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Marquise Hooks, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Austin Wilcox, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Construction Management. Isaac Springer, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Electrical Construction. Taryn Blassengame, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. <laughs> Travis Cox, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Deacon Mincy, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. <laughs> Joseph Foreman, Associate in Applied Science, Air, Con Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. <laughs> John Rawlings, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Michael Sands, Associate of Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. <laughs> Gabriel Mustaine, Associate of Applied Science, Engineering Technology, High Voltage Lineman. <laughs> Braden Crow, 
Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, High Voltage Lineman. Tyler Larison, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, High Voltage Lineman. Hoyt Harandi, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Robert Darnell, Bachelor of Technology, Engineering Technology, Instrumentation, Engineering Technology. Bradley Joe Adams, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Power Plant Technology. Megan Bentz, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning Refrigeration Technology, and Associate of Science in Business. Cody Moore, Bachelor of Technology, Engineering Technology, Civil Engineering Technology. <laughs> Levi Barker, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Industrial Maintenance Technology. William Kupsick, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Industrial Maintenance Technology. <laughs> Tyler Buchanan, Associate in Science, Engineering Technology, Associate in Applied Science, I beg your pardon, Engineering Technology, Power Plant Technology. Anthony Martin, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning, and Refrigeration Technology. Blake Benham, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, High Voltage Lineman. Andrew Means, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, High Voltage Lineman. Dalton Smith, Bachelor of Technology, Engineering Technology, Instrumentation, Engineering Technology. <laughs> James Tyler Neff, Associates in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Power Plant Technology. Austin Martin, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Construction Management. Glenn Haynes, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. John Caldwell, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Engineering Graphics, Design and Drafting. Justin Long, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, High Voltage Lineman. Easton Susi, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, High Voltage Lineman. Dylan Anderson. Bachelor of Technology, Engineering Technology, Instrumentation, Engineering Technology. <laughs> Nikisha McIntosh, Associate of Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Pipeline Integrity Technology.
Carrie Chestnut, Associate in Applied Science, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Clifford Polk, Bachelor of Technology, Engineering Technology, Instrumentation, Engineering Technology. <laughs> Jacob Bettis, Bachelor of Technology, Engineering Technology, Instrumentation, Engineering Technology. Solomon Ben Hayes, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, Electrical and Electronic Technology. <laughs> Caleb Callison, Bachelor of Technology, Engineering Technology, Instrumentation, Engineering Technology. Tiger Hudson, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Construction Management. Nathan Jean Hardage, Associate in Applied Science, Engineering Technology, High Voltage Lineman. Our last graduate, Tyler Koshaway, Associate in Applied Science, Construction Technology, Electrical Construction. Thank you, graduates. We needed a day like this. This has been such a traumatic past six months to be a college student and for all of us here at OSUIT. Uh, as many of you know, we had to cancel our spring graduation ceremony, and some uh, that are in attendance today were probably scheduled to graduate back in April. But uh, with this ceremony, OSUIT is officially back in business, and we are producing some of the best trained technicians on the planet, and you are evidence of that, and my congratulations to each and every one of you. I just wish I didn't have to wear a mask up here so you could have seen my big smile as each one of you came across stage, just seeing the pride in your eyes. And uh, I'm real excited for all of you. At this time, I'd like to ask all of the graduates to please rise. Graduates, you have earned our deepest respect. Please remember this day because you have achieved a major milestone in your life. To signify the culmination of your academic achievement, you may now move your tassel from right to left and give yourselves another round of applause. Proud members of the 216th graduating class, congratulations. OSUIT thanks each of you for taking part in this special event. To ensure social distancing while exiting, you will be escorted out one row at a time. Once you've left the building, we ask that you continue to practice social distancing and avoid gathering in large groups. If you're not in the front row, please be seated. The first row will begin exiting upon conclusion of today's ceremony. Please enjoy a safe trip home. We are dismissed. 